Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Steve. Right. Hello, Giuseppe. My trading warrior brother, I'm making you the presenter. Looking forward to talking to you. It's been too long. Waiting to hear your voice. See your screen. My trading warrior brother. <laughs> Hi, Dale. Can you I hear just me? happy I could hear you. Very good. How are you, first of all? Oh, I, I'm great, <laughs> buddy. And uh, God, I mean, you know, I believe that you were my inaugural interview when I first tried the other side of the mic. It's <laughs> been right. on your side of the mic for decades, and That's right. uh, I believe yeah. you were the first interview I did at Laura on FX Street. Do uh, you remember? Were you the first? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think it was May 2014, actually. Yeah. So uh, it was yeah. 2014, and uh, yeah, it was great, actually. You know, we were uh, reviewing, I remember we were reviewing the Euro and uh, looking at the Euro before the drop. Um, uh, and uh, and also after the drop, I always mentioned that 121. We have, we were almost there. Yeah, I <laughs> but yes, that. I mean, and, you, know, you know, I have to thank you, Dale. I have to thank and, you uh, Dale, because I, you uh, into this. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, Giuseppe, I, I you know I recall um, finding you on Twitter, and I would have to say that you were <laughs> one of my best finds on Twitter. Um, you know, I haven't been following your work uh, lately, but um, I was always impressed with it. And I, I know we're going to get into talking a little bit about your work, but you sent me an email, I don't know, probably about four months ago, and you received one of the most prestigious awards that you can receive as a technician in your new adopted country, Canada. <laughs> what was that award? And, That's right. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. I know you don't like to brag, but um, that was that's something that uh, many traders, analysts in their career uh, envy would love to have that after their name. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I was. Award. Go ahead. I was really, I was really not expecting it, uh, and. Um, it actually uh, was um, related to an adaptation of uh, of a work I've done in my master thesis. Um, it was the work is about uh, showing how a money manager can not only affect returns but also can affect um, uh, reaching objectives in trading, which which uh, which obviously uh, returns uh, are only part of it, right? Because when we talk about objectives. There is also a probability attached to uh, to the return that you that you get, and, and the um, name of the and the name of the society. The name of the society is the Canadian Society of Technical Analysts, which is part of the um, is the Canadian chapter of the IFTA, the International Federation of Technical Analysts. Okay. And uh, as you know, it's it's kind of an umbrella organization, and uh, and they have in each uh, in each country they have. Um, uh, they have a national uh, association, and basically, uh, this is a this is a non-profit organization. What we do, uh, we actually foster the use of tech analysis, analysis in uh, you know in uh, in the industry, not only retail but also uh, but also uh, but also professionals. There's a lot of professionals, believe it or not, <laughs> still do not use uh, tech analysis or, very, or, or actually make very little use of it. And actually, here in Canada, what's happening? I think it's uh, it's happening everywhere. Um, basically, the big companies are getting rid of of the uh, traditional tech analysts, right? They're, they're all moving into quants. Uh, in fact, someone, uh, so some people believe that tech analysis will, will eventually be renamed as <laughs> quant analysis. But I don't believe that. I think there is still a lot of value in what we do. <clears throat> oh, are, are you talking about that? A lot of people think that we're just going to go to AI and black box trading and it's going to replace people. Well, I, I've been asking this question to some of the uh, professional um, uh, professional members of the organization, and we're talking about also big, big boys, big guys who manage two billions uh, for BMO, uh, Bank of Montreal, and uh, uh, you know, and the kind of and the like of. So, um, what they say, and the question I had was, uh, do you think that the use of tech, uh, the use of artificial intelligence applied to the market is going to change the market? Um, 
um, in a f fundamentally, I mean, uh, structurally. And what he says is that, well, the market is already changing, but what I believe is that um, uh, different people are gonna bring different approaches uh, to um, the way they look at the market and it's reflected in their artificial intelligence uh, algorithms. So he believes that overall, the market will not change, which means that on the larger time frames, we will still be able to use the tools that uh, that we use. So, which was actually refreshing for me because yeah. So, so, <laughs> at, so actually, it's for people that use uh, drill down on one hour and thirty minute, maybe even four hour, that the high frequency traders are going to create uh, these types of anomalies that weren't there before. Well, um, uh, uh, algorithms are there, Dale, already, yeah. uh, even in the Forex market, okay? To be honest, in the last three years, I've not noticed any, any changes when it comes to the four hour, for sure, and even the okay. hourly. In fact, I use the 45 minutes, uh, 48 minutes uh, proficiently, and it's pretty stable, actually. Of course, if you go down 15, 10, uh, sometimes I time on the 10 uh, minutes and uh, still still you can you can work with it right now um, I believe the you know the forex market for for retailers I mean it's pretty small market it's only five percent um, but um, yeah I mean I, I didn't find at least that's my personal experience I don't know if anybody else um, has shared the same okay and well, uh, yeah so yeah why don't we talk about what sets you apart, at least what I notice that sets you apart from <laughs> standard uh, Fibonacci traders, and I know that's a big part of what you do, but what is yeah. unique about your work is uh, your focus on program trading levels that you're able to spot before the markets achieve those levels. So you want to talk a little bit about yes, how that's you the, use uh, program trading levels? Yes, that's I the main I think we came idea. up with the term Footprints. Footprints. Yes, that that's what was your uh, was your suggestion actually. The elephants, the algo algo footprints. Now, the, <laughs> um, yes. I mean, um, uh, can you see my screen? By the way, can you see my uh, yeah, chart? Yes, we you're a weekly, daily, and uh, four hour Perfect. update. So the best, probably the best way, and maybe I'm gonna give you also an update of where I think the Yuzo Japanese yen is going. Okay. And, uh, you know, I love this market. This market is one of the most, I mean, it's a very technical market. I, uh, uh, you know. Uh, the if yen you, in particular, Giuseppe? Pardon me? The yen or Forex in general? Um, no, particularly the US or Japanese yen. Okay. Um, and uh, probably, uh, you will remember, probably it was around the beginning of 2016 here, uh, and there were a lot of people, uh, talking about the yen moving higher, right? I remember one of the levels that was mentioned was 123, but the reality is that, you know, when we look, I, I use Fibonacci in a non-conventional way, if you wish, and um, I basically use some rules, and some of those rules, I mean, are, are, are uh, I also, um, um, you know, they are open, they are, they are, I share them, not all of them, but many of them. So. Uh, the idea here is that when we trace and we get a retrace into the 50% of the market retraces and then uh, false participation at those levels, then I'm looking at these two other levels. Uh, this is nothing new really. I mean, you know, 23.6% and 61.8%, which is also the XOP um, Jody Napoli level. I mean, so we're not talking about anything new here. The idea is that by using these traces, we can actually frame price Right, so I have a rule here. The second target is it. Price goes above the second target. It trades from highs to highs. And the reason why, at some point, I said the um, the yen is done and is going to go, is going to move uh, lower, and that was around this area here, end of 2015, beginning of 2015, 16. Sorry, uh, is that the sequence clearly failed at some point. So we had participation around this area here twice. Price got into that first target. And I'm just showing this example here before we get into the future, okay? Before we get into what I believe the um, um, the uh, US dollar Japanese yen is doing. But basically, uh, what I what I'm trying to show here is that we can use Fibonacci certain rules to frame uh, to frame price structure, okay? And that's what I do. 
Now, when we see here, if we zoom here a little bit into this so little so um, once that program trading level, which was tested a few times, finally gave way. Yes. Uh, you define it exactly as a sequence being broken and a correct. shift in threat. And that's the 11607 level that you see here. This little uh, breach here, a few pips, indicated right. to me that the move higher was ended. And so the algos, what they did, or this class of algos that uh, you know we are able to model like this, I didn't come up with all of this. Of course, I had other people looking at this as well. But basically, once that that uh, uh, level is broken, then uh, algos reverse, and algos drive the market. Uh, they actually are the powerful force, and this is a very large time frame, as you can see. It is a weekly yes. time frame, right? Yeah. And so, and and. I mean, you know, and then first and second target hit, look at how precise, you know, uh, these areas might be. And this market is particularly technical. First target hit, the market retraces, the market retraces into, and I'm just applying some of the rules. They're always the same rules. I'm not, not trying to cheat them. You know, we did these things before the fact and so on. So uh, I, want to, I want to look at the future here, okay? Because all this analysis doesn't make sense if we, we are not able to apply to the future, right, uh, right Bill? So exactly. let me let me see what I and, uh, speaking about yeah. the future, what you predicted in the past, uh, I remember even two years ago, uh, when a lot of people were starting to get real bearish and myself included, looking for a correction in the stock market. Uh, you had programmed trading levels at, at that time seemed like the twilight zone to me, up around twenty six, twenty seven hundred, and uh here we are. So uh, you, that yeah, provided you with a great macro view and saved you a lot of money and and probably followers that listen to you about not trying to play the short side the of that. Short yeah. Yeah. No, that nice that helps as well. And yeah. Nice call. Oh, thanks. That helps as well. Now that, that the condition we have there, and we might review that later on because I I I, I like to talk about that as well. I also had uh, one paper recently. Uh, published uh, on the CSTA journal. So, uh, but uh, before we get there, because that, that's very interesting market to look for, uh, to look at. And I think we have, uh, we have a, uh, the conditions for, an, for another 1987, it's are, are, are actually being prepared. And I don't want to be too doomy here, but I'm gonna show you what I, what I mean there. Okay. Um, but let me just continue in this, because I wanna show you where we are gonna, I believe we are gonna go in the US, US or Japanese yen, okay? And I think there is still plenty of opportunity to get on board of this um, of this trend. Now, there was here a 108.80 uh, support, one, two, three, four times, many times. This this area held. Okay, while the dollar index was correcting, uh, basically the uh, U.S. dollar Japanese has moved laterally. Okay, now. The uh, good news uh, uh, came actually just uh, uh, a couple of uh, months ago here. This is a weekly chart. And okay? what happens here is that, um, sorry, that's not the right, the right trace, sorry. The right trace is that, I, I do this trace uh, all uh, before they happen. And when, once they're tested, once this level is tested, I never change these trades, okay? Uh, I don't go and uh, mess around with these things. So as you can see here, if we read this, this chart, what happened here? Market went down, bulls supported um, the US or Japanese yen around 109. Price went higher into the area where bear were ready and actually they actually acted. And as you can see, this market yeah. moved naturally. How did what you handle here? that one red candle where it closed underneath that support level? This what do you one? do when you, you know, it oh, was kind of I love money here. <laughs> what? I, I lost money here because I was believing that. See, we had a lot of we had we had dump money also trying okay. to move my market lower, but right. eventually then you know uh, the hip stocking timing. Which yeah, is nice. That was a great bear trap there. Yes, yeah. it was, and actually it took me. So all right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but but I have to say, I mean, this trend higher and this trend lower, this trend higher and this trend lower, they were very very good actually. Okay. Now, what we're seeing here, can you see something something uh, familiar here, uh, Dale? <laughs> look at the look at what happened here. I'm making it a little bit bigger for you. Can yeah, you see, see here it. what happened? Uh -huh. So it's a break, right? So yeah. to me, 
to me, uh, that means that bears are not interesting, at least uh, program trading bears are not interesting in pushing this price lower any longer. Okay. And look at what happened after that break. Magic. Right. What happened? The 50% came in and supported price. Right? So right. Where is this market going? We have two targets now. We have the larger targets, which is represented by the 50%. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to make it uh, a little bit um, uh, bigger here. OK, uh, just that you all know what the level is. It's 123.32. This level, believe it or not, is justified by the market being held uh, in this area here. And this is a very technical market. So when these kind of things happen, I really uh, take note and I really act on them. And there is a closer target, which is the one that I'm looking for at the moment, 116.40 uh, here, which is the uh, the closer target of this inner 50%, if you wish. Okay. So to me, it doesn't matter what's happening now. I mean, yes, we are in a correction. Our index today is kind of uh, correcting a little bit. Um, and uh, I've been analyzing our index forever. I, I uh, personally believe it's in a, it's turning around and moving higher and user Japanese seems to confirm that I don't know do you have any questions about this I mean I did I mean I I reviewed this just yeah. to showcase what I you know you know you know what I do I mean that's I mean it's for, for and you and you always have your line in the sand and that's if the sequence is broken correct that's the 61.8 percent level, oh, okay. level here. okay and okay. the levels that you come up with um where you see program trading they coincide with bid levels how are you able to know in advance without giving away the store what levels you should be looking at based upon uh, modeling and uh, algorithm? How do you know before we get there that there's going to be buying or selling interest? At but if you, think, if you think if you think about uh, this process that I just showed you, right? I showed this process in a very large time frame. Now the idea is that if you repeat the same process in a very small time frame. Whenever the uh, trend has broken, is broken, right? That's an indication that the smaller time frame, it's not uh, does not have the power to overcome the larger time frame, and that's and that's when I get the confirmation that there is participation at those levels. So basically, it's the same exact same concepts, but applied in a fractal way to to a smaller time frame. That's the that's the, the main idea there. Okay. So uh, Gwen uh, uh, Giuseppe said 123 and 116 and change, uh, one shorter term, one longer term for his levels in the end. Um, so Giuseppe, uh, you, I see that you know you you were talking about that report that you wrote uh, that kind of gives us a look, a peer into the future, uh, published by the Canadian Society of, of TA, and you discussed. Uh, three intermediate and long-term scenarios for U.S. markets. Uh, do you want to go there or? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's been interesting because um, um, I think it's, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know when things are going to happen, okay? I mean, I don't know, I don't have the crystal ball. I only try to, uh, to get uh, an idea of what could happen and how we, um, you know, how we, uh, we react to that. So, Again, I mean, it's good to work on the weekly, and um, and and this is the um, continuous contract of the uh, ES, the SP500. This is a delayed contract, but delayed uh, um, um, data here. But that's that's not really important. Okay. Uh, what is important is that this market um, retraces 50% on. Uh, historically from zero from uh, from actually the the first versions of the sp500 the sp um i think it was the sp54 so if we go back to history right and uh, yeah. and we actually we get the previous version of the sp500 uh basically we got uh um you know uh, at the beginning it was very very small price here we got a 50 percent bounce uh, in 2003 and now you see here a break, but this is just because of the way the continuous contract is calculated, right? I mean, the people who were trading know very, very well 
that markets stop at a funny 666 level, okay? Yeah. And the reason yeah. why you see this, uh, this level lower here, 479, is just because it's a continuous contract, so it does not reflect the previous uh, historical lead in the right way. But basically what Dale was, uh, was saying before is that uh, you know, I'll be mentioning this first target, 1943, and and also the second target, uh, 2500. The market went well above that level there. Okay, and right. uh, the idea here is now that what, what happens when we get um, markets well uh, beyond that uh, second target? Well, you know, a 1987 scenario. Uh, it might, might happen, might happen, okay? And I want to bring, I share with the Dale um, uh, the link of uh, of, uh, of that article that I um, sure that I have. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here an excerpt of that, and this is just historical data of the uh, SP 500 with the 50% retrace on the 74. So these uh, these uh, traces. Uh, hold on historical data as well, which means that modern algorithms have internalized something about something fundamental about about um, the uh, psychology of the market. Okay, so what you see here in '74, it's a 50% retrace from from the very beginning of uh, SP500. Okay, what happened after that is the market moved into the first target, and then it moved into the second target. That was 195. Okay, this was '74 in preparation for the 90, um, uh, uh, 1987. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to have another 1987, okay? This is just a scenario. This is something that could happen. And historically, what happened after 85, 86, the market moved another 54% above, above that second target. Up to the, uh, this level, which is uh, what you see here, is the high of 1987, okay? So, okay. After that, what we had was an extension from highs to highs, okay? And we got price right into that area and the uh, market continued higher. So that's what I see here at the moment, okay? I don't know when this is going to, how high this is going to go. This might be going to go another uh, year, another two years. I really don't know. But what I want to leave you with, and this is, uh, I believe this is very, very important, is if you keep tracing from highs into thousands, to whatever new high you have, you're gonna get a pretty good idea of where the market, if we have a flash crash, but even if you don't have a flash crash, even if we have, if we if we just have a correction, where the market could go. So if the high was the high printed today, right? Can you see that if we get a very yes. dramatic event, the market could go into 2120. And mark my words, Dave. <laughs> That's Dave, a freak out. This is going yeah. to this is going to uh, be. I mean, if we really get, um, uh, you know, a dramatic event, that's what we're going to get. <clears throat> right. You get it, and everyone will say that's been wrong for hundreds of handles. I told you the market was going to crash one day, but the crash is only going to take it back to the highs of last year, twenty one hundred. If we were in that 1800 to 2100 range it just brings you back to the breakout yeah that's that's the idea that's the idea and actually these models here are confirming what you what you say actually so i think it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting that uh, that there is a convergence there but you know it happened in the past it might happen in the future we don't know personally i don't know when a lot of people believe that 18 because of interest rates coming out going higher and a low, um, uh, historically uh, low uh, VIX uh, uh, volatility. And I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the future. I can only, in fact, I will not act on this. Uh, my my my, uh, my models only tell me when to, in this case, when to buy, not when to sell. Okay. Uh, they don't tell me the exact time. Right? They just tell okay. me that if we get there, we might need to test for. Um, well, the Yano, the Yano tell you, Giuseppe. <laughs> yeah, probably, yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. why don't we take a few minutes to show Fib Stalker's website? And I know you sent me an email. Uh, you have several offers that I believe would be great edification for the community. First of all, the complete PDF of your intermediate and long-term scenarios for the U.S. market. Um, 
that you're also offering, this is new since I last talked to you, uh, a six hour free course for people. Yeah, I've, uh, and is, yeah, do, I've been do you teach that or is it all on, um, is it all uh, made up and you just send it out PDF? So, so this is, uh, it's actually video based, the deal. Okay. And, um, uh, I was invited to speak at the Western Ontario University, and I created a one-day seminar for them, uh, where I share all my main, uh, you know, concepts. And uh, I thought it, you know, this could be useful for anybody who wants to uh, look at this kind of way of uh, of modeling the market. So uh, it's six-hour videos, and you can register here. I mean, it's all free, and uh, you know. Okay, just you for, have some uh, testimonials there, and so that's free, and it's a six-hour course, and then. Uh, you're going to be coming up with some type of uh, what? Do, what does EOD stand for? for so your EOD. Service. EOD. Uh, EOD. End of day. End of day. End, end of, day. of day. Yeah. And okay. uh, so you're you're beta testing that in uh, now, and you'll be launching that in 2018. Yes, we. I also. I will also have. Um, we'll also probably have a room in the future, but for now it's going to be a uh, signal. So. Um, and it's uh, they're not very frequent. You might get one or two signals per uh, per week. Sometimes we don't get signals, so that's for uh, you know that's for um, uh, for traders, also part-time traders who uh, who maybe don't don't have a lot of time and um, they just want to review the uh, the signals and put on the orders and and uh, and go on. Uh, I probably Close will speakers. have. So go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, just say, no, you know, um, yes, but that's it. I mean, just uh, for, for part-time trader or people who do not have a lot of uh, time. In the future, I'm probably going to uh, extend that to intraday analysis, not signals, because it's pretty di difficult to, to give signals uh, during the day, but definitely the analysis and entry areas. And, well, um, I, I'm going to have to call my attorney because number five, you did not get my permission to uh, use my, uh, uh, my positioning in your newsletter. Your positioning? Yeah, additional, no, up there, number five. Number five? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not true. <laughs> but that's not true, Dave. Well, who, <laughs> said, who said you could, who said <laughs> you could publish that's my trades? Okay, okay. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you what, you, what I call dump money. Okay, but people, people, I, I don't want people to hate me because of this. Yeah, okay? I respect every uh, position to, uh, to everyone. But anyway, this value yeah, area yeah. here, the value I've, areas between. Yeah. <laughs> the I, I, areas I've worn between. the dunce hat, buddy. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I want to. I want to thank you. You talked about time for taking the time of being here. It's great well, to have man. you on face, Giuseppe, and. People could find you. Uh, you're not too active on Twitter, so for all of these offers, not, uh, not, uh, not recently, but I eventually I will now because I um, I'm now full time uh, trading, and uh, you know okay. eventually I'll get I'll, I'll get more active there as well. Okay, so it's at Fibstalker, and uh, his website is www.fibstalker.com. Giuseppe Bazil, my trading warrior brother. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all. Thanks for inviting me, Dale. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope to uh, hear from you soon. Okay. And may pips rain down on you and all your mentees <laughs> and subscribers uh, <laughs> for the rest of the year. And have a great 2018. Just and, uh, I, always, I always root for you. Thank you very much, Dale. I mean, you're very kind. And uh, the same I wish uh, to you all the best for... Uh, for the new year and also this initiative, I mean, I uh, I have to uh, commend and congratulate you for, uh, you know, for uh, setting up a great community here. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, Giuseppe. And uh, it's been three years since darker days for me now, and uh, I'll always remember how you were there for me. Uh, and thank I, you I have a memory like an elephant. So the best of luck with Footprints. I encourage anyone who's here to check out Giuseppe Bazil at fibstalker.com. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And it could be another arrow in your quill to attack the markets with.
So good hunting, buddy. Good luck into the Fed. And, Thank you. Uh, good hunting to you as well. It was, it was great having you. <laughs> I'm All just right. waiting. I mean, <laughs> All right. So uh, be safe and uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Okay. Uh, as they say in your home country, ciao, brother. <laughs> ciao. Ciao, ciao. See you soon. All right. Bye-bye. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's our so session, much. everybody. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, 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 maybe I'll see everyone in the other chat room around Fed time. Good hunting. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone. If I don't see in the chat room, see you tomorrow. Um, I have Lydia Item Finkley with us for tomorrow. Thanks again, Giuseppe. Adios, everyone. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.